Hi everyone and welcome to Billy Fitzgerald Golf. And tonight we're going to be working with uneven lies. Ball above your feet, below your feet, uphill lie, downhill lie. There's a lot of things to consider before you hit this shot. Ball position, what the face of the club is doing, how the ball is going to react based on the lie and based on what the face is telling it, and how do I set up. All these things are so important to make sure that we hit the correct shot. So before we begin, we want to establish how we look on a flat lie because that's what we're trying to do to get our setup to get into a position where it seems relatively flat so our swing can have the best possible chance to be accurate and have a successful shot. So just imagine a flat lie and what your spine angle looks like. So if this is my spine angle on a flat lie, this is what it's going to look like on an uphill lie or a downhill lie. So we're going to be talking about all things considered with uneven lies. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's get started. So the first lie I want to talk about is the extreme ball below my feet. So again, we need to go back to getting ourselves what a flat lie looks like. Now I'm going to take my ruler, I'm going to adjust it to the slope so you can see I'm going to be really bent over. So in order to do that, I need a little bit more knee flex, and then I'm going to have to adjust my hands so the golf club is laying flat on the ground. So it looks something like this. So now I'm going to feel like I'm, I'm bent over a little bit more. Now you can see in order to do that, my stance is going to get a little bit wider, and I'm going to have a little bit more flex in my knees. Now if I don't do anything with my hands, the toe of the club is off the ground. So I need to feel like my hands go a little bit higher so the leading edge in the golf club can stay flat right on the ground. My hands are going to be a little bit higher. The other thing with this is that, is that now because my center of gravity, my knees are flexed a little bit more, my right leg is a, is a little bit more intrusive in my swing. So I'm going to pull my right foot back a little bit. Okay, so my hands are high. My hands are high a little bit. Because, so I can put the leading edge right on the ground. Now I'm going to make some swings and see where my bottom out point is. So again, I'm not trying to help the ball. I'm trying to feel like I'm just trying to brush the grass. I get right in here, get my right foot back. I'm seeing where the mark is. So wherever my mark was, that's where my bottom out point is. That's where I'm going to place the golf ball in my stance. Get my right foot back a little bit, hands up so it's the leading edge is staying flat on the ground, and just run the face right into the ball. So remember, we're always trying to get the lie flat in consideration with my spine angle. Make sure that the face in the lie angle is flat on the ground. The ball is going to go a little bit to the right because the face is going to be a little bit open. So do this and you'll have no problem with these severe downhill lies. Now I have the ball above my feet. I virtually have no choice but to stand pretty much straight up and down and get my arms out again so I'm putting the leading edge fairly close to this golf ball. Now I wouldn't recommend grounding your club because these lies are so delicate that any wrong move the ball can roll right down into my footprint and I will be penalized for moving the golf ball. So we want to make sure that you, that you hover the club. One thing that we used to do in junior camps was a trick shot, because the juniors like trick shots, is have them hit golf balls off their knees. So when they got down or when the ground got closer, much like this shot, if they use too much shoulder joints, the club is going to bottom out way before the golf ball because of sequencing issues. So it's a lot like this. So what I would recommend is make some practice swings where you hold the golf club out in front of you and practice swinging the face and swinging the face and guiding it again making sure that the toe doesn't turn over too much because the face of the club wants to go over here now we have to make sure that we keep the face open as much as we can so the ball will go fairly straight it's going to go left anyways because of this lie but we don't want to make things worse with rolling our wrists over we want to feel like the trail hand keeps guiding the toe or feel like the toe of the club stays out to the right or works under. So if I make practice swings up here, 
again, you're going to see that as I swing back and through, I'm trying to feel like I'm guiding the toe this way. There's not a lot of shoulders. My torso is almost doing nothing. This is mostly hands, wrists, and arms. My body's going to react a little bit. I'm off my back foot just to anchor me. It'd, be, it'd do me no good to, to feel like I'm on my front foot because then I would jam the club into the ground. It's going to change my angle of attack too much. So again, practice swinging back and through. I'm very loose in my arms and shoulder sockets. Right now, my shoulders are just reacting. I'm just basically trying to feel like I'm playing with the face of the golf club in my hands. So pretty much standing straight up and down. Obviously, I need to choke, choke down, move into this. Because of this stance, my right foot is already back. So I'm going to make some practice swings and feel how the face of the club stays out. So you can see how far left that golf ball went. But I virtually, there was almost no turn. Now my shoulders reacted a little bit. But again, just trying to make sure that I'm finding my bottom out point. I'm stable here. My right hip's out of the way. And get out of this situation as soon as possible. All right, now I've got a severe uphill lie. So again, this is my flat lie. As I start to go uphill, you can see I, I always want to feel like I match my shoulders and my hips with whatever lie I have, uphill, downhill. I'm trying to swing with the hill. If I don't adjust my setup, this golf club is going to go straight into the bank. And as soon as the leading edge hits the bank, the club's going to stop, the grip's going to keep going, and I'm going to de-loft the golf club, and then I'm going to lose control over my golf ball. So I always want to adjust my shoulders and my hips so I'm swinging up with the hill. The other thing that you have to remember is any time that you're adjusting and tilting with your shoulders, you're actually, when you do this with the club and this leans back, you're adding loft. So my 54 is you know, maybe almost a pitching wedge, and my lob wedge is a sand wedge or a gap wedge. So if you're going to play the lob wedge, it's not going to go as far. So you have to swing or put more speed into it depending on how far you're going. So always remember, it's not the club in your hand. You're always adding loft. So the first one I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit with is a 58. So again, once we get down here, I basically have no choice but to stabilize myself on my right foot. Again, I'm going to make some practice swings. I'm tilting this way. If it helps to put the club up in front of you and then tilt with the slope so I can see or, or feel like the shaft line helps me recognize where the slope is and then make some swings where I feel that I'm going with the slope. So again, get the face ready to go. My hands are up a little bit again so I can put the leading edge on the ground. Swing back. The ball is going to go very high and very short. So it's a good idea to experiment with another golf club. So just come out and practice these things. You won't know how it's going to react until you get into this situation. Now it doesn't happen all the time, but I can tell you it happens enough where it's, it's worth it. So now I have a 54. The other thing that you can control a little bit is trajectory. With my trail hand, if I'm trying to feel like the, the ball is going to go a little lower, based on where the pin is. You know, maybe I want to swing a little higher, harder and get it a little higher because I'm close to the pin or it's far away. I want to take a little bit more loft off, the, off of it and feel like my knuckles, again, are going to follow my wrist if I'm going to take loft off. So in, in other words, if I want the trajectory to be lower, my knuckles are going to trail my wrist, medium. And then if I actually want it to go higher, again, I'm always swinging the, with the slope. I'm catching my knuckles up with the wrist if I've short-sighted myself. Now this pin is, is probably 50 feet away from me. So I've got a 54. I'm going to match the slope. And I'm going to feel like my knuckles trail a little bit so the ball doesn't go so abruptly up in the air so I can feel like I get it to launch a little bit even off this lie. So again, I'm going to tilt with the slope. And, and I'm going with the slope, but I'm feeling like my hands are forward a little bit. It's still going to go up in the air, but it's going to have a different trajectory than if I were to release my hand and feel. You can even see there that the different loft of what's happening. I'm controlling the face. It's right in my hands. 
So again, make some practice swings. I'm gonna feel like I'm trying to get the ball a little bit lower even though I know it's going up. I'm gonna to have to ha have some speed because it's basically a lob wedge now. So pretty good. The more you understand what's going on with the lie, with your swing arc, what's happening to the face of the club, the more success you'll have in all of these situations. So we've all had this lie. We thought we were in the bunker, but the ball got caught up in the rough, so now it's downhill. Now what do we do? The first thing we need to do is identify what you need to do with your setup. So again, if this is flat, then my spine angle is going down, so my shoulders start to match the hill. I always want to feel like my hips and shoulders are matching the hill now. Again, if I put my club up this way and tilt this way so I can see that I'm going down. The reason I love downhill lies as an instructor is because so many people try to help the ball up. The face of the club and the loft of the club is what's going to propel the ball in the air. Our job is to get the face into the ball. So the more I help the ball, the worse I'm going to get, especially in a downhill lie. So if this is the ball and I go downhill and my club's going this way and I try to help it, the club is going up too soon. I'm going to miss the ball. So it forces the student to swing with the slope, go through the ball. Don't help it, just run the face into it. So again, once we get into our setup position, I'm gonna make some practice swings. I'm gonna get tilted, so you're gonna feel a lot like your chip shot. Your chest cavity, your head is gonna be left of the golf ball, and you really gotta trust the loft of the ball. Now again, if I'm trying to hit a lower shot with my wrist, so this becomes really important as far as trajectory. If I'm trying to hit it lower, most of the time I've got a lip in front of me, so I'm at least trying to feel like my knuckles catch up with my wrist. So when I swing, I'm at least trying to feel like the, the grip end is caught up with the face of the club, if not slightly in front, because I'm going downhill, but I'm trying to add loft at the same time. So it's almost like a bunker shot where I feel like the face is kind of catching through the strike. The other thing that you'll notice is, again, like the uphill, it adds loft. So downhill, it de-lofts it in, unless I'm adding loft to it on my own. So here, I'm going to do the opposite of what I was doing with the uphill. I'm going to try to add loft. So I'm going to swing down with my hips, with my shoulders, feeling my, like my hand is going under a little bit so I can get some loft underneath the golf ball. Again, make sure you tilt. and it'll come right out. So make sure that the ball position, again, make some swings, see where your bottoming, bottom out point is. Again, the last thing you want to do is play it, you know, extremely far back or extremely far left. You want to end up kind of in the middle, start there with kind of your balance point, and then you can work right or left, depending on where the, the face of the club is bottoming out. I hope this helps and it gets you out of these undesirable lies. Like and subscribe to my channel, Billy Fitzgerald Golf, for all tips on golf. Mm -hmm.